You're welcome to another gospel movie review. It seems like we've had a number to do this compulsory holiday season. Today we'll be taking a look at My Mother-in-Law from the stables of the Mount Zion Film Productions. It was released on April 5, 2020 on Damlola Mike Bamloye's YouTube channel. The movie was written by Evangelist Gloria Bamloye while it was directed by Damlola Mike Bamloye. My mother-in-law tells the story of Lola, a lady who is about to get married to Tife but has issues with her mother-in-law-to-be and this sparks conflict when she eventually gets married to him. The focus is clear from the beginning. It is a story addressing families and we usually get one or two of those every year from Gloria Bamlui. Lola is the main character here, played by Oguma Martha. I think this is her first feature in a Mount Zion movie but boy did she nail it. She delivered her lines well and her mannerisms made her character believable. Lola's actions and inactions are driven by the popular belief that African mothers-in-law are evil. Lola is the archetype of many African single ladies. One thing that struck me about her is that even though her friend Sumbo gives her sound advice that will make her home peaceful, Lola can't really receive it because she sees everything through her fear-tainted glasses. This is so much that she regards the truth that can save her life, the word of God, as philosophies. That's how bad that wrong mindset had eaten deep into her being. The great thing about this movie is that even though it seems targeted at wives and wives-to-be at first, it also portrays the truth that mothers-in-law, husbands and fathers-in-law need to know and live by. The movie addresses this and uses every weapon in its arsenal to do it. In the first scene, we hear Hello Sister by J. Mikey playing in the background. This is a song that shows the nexus between one's relationship with God and the choice of a good spouse. Then the dialogue. There is a lot of exposition in this movie and so it is heavily dependent on dialogue. For me, the deep things shared in this movie are like four or five individual sermons. The movie itself testifies to this when at one time Lola tells Sumbo. Thanks for all your sermon. In this regard, I must commend the smooth delivery of lines by Evangelist Yemi Adepoju, especially at the end when he discusses the blessings of God's covenant for families. My mother-in-law also exposes the fear that some mothers have that their sons will get married to fake sisters, but is quick to let us know that we should not let that fear drive us into sin. Therefore, there is no need to sexually check out a lady before you get married to her. Tife, played by Olumideoki, delivers a line that I think is profound. This is not a matter of prayer, but obedience. This is not to say that prayers are not important, but after the place of prayers has been satisfied, the requirements of obedience must also be met. Take Sumbo for example. When her mother-in-law-to-be rejects her, she goes to God in prayers and God inspires an idea for a solution in her. She obeys and then the matter is resolved. Sumbo, played by Okiti Pimuyowa, delivers an excellent performance in a dining room scene that shows just how much she has been able to win over her mother-in-law. She's a symbol of hope for what a happy home and a healthy in-law relationship can be. Some areas of the plot structure though raised several questions in my mind that need clarity. There were a few gaps that might have been better filled by the movie itself for a smoother watching experience rather than we the audience doing it. For example, Sumba asks her fiancé Bade about Lola's whereabouts. Why? Couldn't she have just given Lola a call? Also, though the movie had the chance to tell us how close Tifes and Lola's wedding is on two occasions, they still only say few months. Knowing how close the wedding was would have helped us in understanding the timeline of the movie's events better. Lola had wanted Sumbo to be her best lady, yet she only started considering it few months to the wedding because Sumbo was now around. Where had Sumbo been? Why did she have to be around before Lola would consider her to be her best lady in this age when a call will give you all the information you need? What kind of friendship did they have that Sumbo had wedding in mind? In fact, just a month's gap and Lola would not know. Sumbo's excuse was that Lola had not been around when her relationship with Badi started. How soon did it start for the wedding to have been fixed? 
Was there no introduction? I know these questions have answers, but I just think that it might have been better if those answers had been reflected in the movie itself. Also, the subtitles had a few issues. Apart from some spelling errors, the subtitles sometimes delayed in popping up on the screen. What's more, some dialogue that the characters did not utter appeared as subtitles. I think these problems can be avoided through proper and careful proofreading. Ultimately, my mother-in-law is a heartwarming and charming experience. I love the way the movie ends. It gives you that feeling that everything will be alright, that everything went well with the characters. It uses a montage that comprises cuts in action with slow motion and some dialogue, all accompanied with that wonderful soundtrack by J. Mikey. The soundtrack itself is a message on its own, a message of love, not just for the family, but for the whole world. Okay, so we've come to the end of the review of My Mother-in-Law. The link to the movie is in the description below. So, what did you think about My Mother-in-Law? What was your favorite scene in it? You can put your thoughts in the comment section. We'll end this review in the way the movie we reviewed ended. Please like our videos, subscribe to our channel. Oh, click the notification bell and remember, stay blessed.